Our cover story tonight, Bollywood superstar Salman Khan has been found guilty of killing two black bucks. This happened in 1998. The verdict came today, 20 years after the complaint against him was first registered. Of course, this is not the end of the case. Salman Khan's lawyers have moved for bail. But one of India's biggest superstars will spend the night in jail. Take a look at what happened today. He is one of the most successful stars of the Indian film industry. But Salman Khan's controversial past has caught up with the superstar yet again. A court in Jodhpur has found Salman Khan guilty of killing two black bucks. He has been sentenced to five years in jail and a penalty of 10,000 rupees has also been levied on him. The case dates back to the night of 2nd October 1998. Back then, the superstar was shooting his film Hamsad Saath Hai in Jodhpur. His co-stars Saif Ali Khan, Sonali Bendre, Tabu and Neelam too were charged in the case, but they have all been acquitted. Salman Khan ko nau bata hai ikon mein doshi mante hue 5 varsh ki saza aur 10000 rupaye jurmane se aarupit kiya gaya hai tatha kyunki 5 varsh ki saza hui hai uska giriftari warrant ban chuka hai aur use central jail bheja jayega The verdict comes 20 years after the first complaint was filed Salman Khan has been convicted under the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 Under this law hunting an endangered species of antelope can lead to jail time for up to 6 years Now Salman has two options. He can file an appeal against the sentence in the Sessions Court or the High Court. The star can also apply for a suspension of the sentence. And Salman Khan's lawyers have already moved for bail. It's up to the state to decide. If they think there is a fit case in which appeal is to be filed, obviously they will file their appeal and it is their prerogative to decide. But so far as Salman Khan is concerned, he has left with no other option except to prefer an appeal against the conviction. Salman is one of India's biggest stars. His films are among the top box office earners of all time, and fans refuse to accept the court's verdict. A lot of money is riding on Salman Khan. His last release, Tiger Zinda Hai, grossed more than $52 million, and his next film is due for a release in August. But for now, the star will have to spend some time in jail. Bureau report, V. Incredible, that statement. Had the Black Bucks been Muslim, they wouldn't have got justice, and Salman Khan is being targeted because he's from the minority community. That's the Pakistani foreign minister for you. This verdict has sparked a fierce debate in India, but all sides agree that it has come to fruition only because of the Bishnoi community in the state of Rajasthan. They doggedly pursued the case over the years. The question then is, who are the Bishnois and why did they ensure no mercy for one of India's biggest superstars? Desert lore has it that a Bishnoi never kills, but may not shy away from sacrificing one's life if it's to save another life. Many a poacher who strayed inadvertently into a Bishnoi village has left only after a good thrashing. For the Bishnoi, every life is precious and they're willing to go the extra mile to save both plant and animal life. A tour to a Bishnoi village in Western Rajasthan may throw some surprises for those who are used to seeing protected animals only inside a zoo or a national park. Black bucks, chinkaras, peacocks, freely roaming Bishnoi villages along with cattle. A few years ago, the picture of a Bishnoi woman breastfeeding a deer calf that was separated from its mother made international headlines. The Bishnois believe that God punishes with drought when man interferes with nature. They stoutly oppose the felling of trees or the killing of animals. A Bishnoi's life training is that of a nature warrior. They protect animals. They worship trees. In fact, the famous Chipko movement of the 1970s in the Himalayan foothills where villagers hugged trees to save them from the axe was inspired by a similar movement in the western Thar desert more than 200 years ago. We're talking about 1730. In the year 1730, nearly 350 Bishnoi had sacrificed their lives to save trees, being cut for a new palace that was being planned by the king of Jodhpur. The then Jodhpur ruler was so moved by the action that he banned the felling of Kejri trees and the hunting of animals in Bishnoi villages. The village of Jalnadi is now known as Kejrali and an annual festival in the memory of this sacrifice is still organized. The desert, they say, often throws up many surprises for the uninitiated, the Bishnoi can be one of them. And their fight is noteworthy, not just because of uh, the fact that it was against one of India's most loved film stars, but also because it has been very long drawn. 20 years is a long, long time, especially for a court case to be dragged. 
and this one involves some of India's most prominent personalities. No wonder then that every twist and turn in the Black Buck case made it to national headlines. Our next report brings you up to speed with how this case has progressed and why it's almost as dramatic as a Bollywood film. Twenty years ago, a multi-star of Bollywood extravaganza dazzled the silver screen. And two decades later, the movie, or at least the stars therein, are making headlines once again. The lead star of the film, Salman Khan, was accused of poaching black bucks while shooting for the film in Rajasthan in 1998. Nine years later, he was sentenced by the Rajasthan High Court to five years in prison. Superstar was forced to spend five days in a jail in Jodhpur, was granted bail later. Then, in 2016, the High Court acquitted the actor in the poaching cases, leading to a huge public outcry. Later that same year, the state government submitted an appeal in the Supreme Court, which decided to fast-track the case. 20 years after the first complaint was filed in the case, Salman Khan has been found guilty and slapped with a five-year jail sentence. His co-stars, however, have been acquitted. Bureau Report, Leon. So why have the wheels of justice churned so slowly? It's no longer a secret that India's judicial system faces a massive backlog. As of 2016, more than 27 million cases, 27 million cases were pending across various courts in India. There, there's also a massive shortfall of judges. As many as 4,500 benches are believed to be empty. The district and sub-courts of India face the biggest crisis, 21,017. That is the sanction strength for judges in these courts, 21,017. There are only a little over 16,000 judges functioning right now. That's a shortfall of more than 4,000 judges. The vacancies, we can tell you, may not be filled any time soon. As a result, there are more than 2 crore, 30 lakh or 23 million cases pending before all district and sub-courts in India. Let's talk about the high courts. Ideally, a little more than 1,000 judges are required in India's high courts. What we have is only 650. That means 464 vacancies. High court judges currently face a backlog of more than 38 lakh or 3.8 million cases. That many pending cases. The highest court of the land, the Supreme Court, needs seven more judges to complete the sanction strength of 31. There's a backlog of 60,000 cases in the apex court. That should explain 20 years for one verdict. Since we're talking about big numbers, it's also worth dwelling on this set. A significant portion of Bollywood's economy rides on Salman Khan's shoulders. The highest paid actor in the Hindi film industry and the only one with three films in the 300 crore movie club, Salman Khan enjoys stardom like no other. And now that his fate hangs in the balance, so does the fate of projects worth at least, and pay attention, a thousand crore rupees, roughly a hundred and fifty million dollars. Salman Khan has at least seven films of fifteen million dollars each in the pipeline. The first to be affected will be Race 3, a sequel to 2013's crime thriller Race 2. The film was slated for release on Eid this year and will cost its makers anywhere between fifteen and eighteen million dollars. Next comes Bharat. A film expected to release on Eid next year, if was scheduled to go on the floor this month, the film would have paired Salman Khan with his 300 crore club partner, director Ali Abbas Zafar. But this could now cost the makers anywhere between 15 to 18 million dollars. Next comes Kick 3, scheduled currently for a Christmas release next year. It may see the same fate as Race 3 in Bharat, so will, uh, so will at least four other films announced for a 2021 release. These films are currently titled as Raghu Raja Ram, Dancing Dad, Dabang 3, and yet, and the yet untitled sequence, uh, sequel rather, of Tiger Zinda Hai. That's about 105 to 126 million dollars. Salman Khan also endorses at least seven to ten brands every year, charging anywhere between 7, 769,000 and 1.53 million dollars per endorsement for an annual contract. He's, his Being Human NGO has an average turnover of $30 million in one year. It is also expected to take a hit. And lastly, his yearly television hosting project that viewers across this country wait for, Big Boss Das Ka Dam, it's called, for which the actor charges $12 million for 20 episodes. He does pack in a lot. 
He's been delivering non-stop hits and yet manages to be controversy's favourite child. Here's a look at the cases he's been embroiled in and why he doesn't seem to learn from past mistakes. Leaving aside the legions of fans that adore and worship India's bhai, Salman Khan has a very dark side that his fans refuse to acknowledge. Criminal cases are not new for Salman. The actor is notorious for five different cases registered against him, most of whom he is acquitted for. Let's break down and understand the criminal cases against the actor. Hit and Run Case 2002 Salman Khan was charged with culpable homicide after he allegedly ran his white Toyota Land Rover into slum dwellers on Hill Road Junction in Bandra, Mumbai. On the 2nd of May 2002, a court held Salman prima facie guilty of culpable homicide and rejected his plea to drop the charge against him. In the following days, several witnesses turned hostile in the High Court and months later, the actor was acquitted on the grounds that Salman's driver was behind the wheel. The Bombay High Court offered special treatment to the actor by fast-tracking his appeal after his conviction. Yes, because Salman Khan is a famous actor. Black Buck Poaching Case 1998 On the night of 1st and 2nd October 1998, Salman Khan and his Hamsat Sathya co-stars Saif Ali Khan, Sonali Bendre, Tabu and Neelam allegedly hunted and killed two black bucks near the village of Kankani in Rajasthan. Salman was slapped with two cases on the same incident, one for actually poaching the black bucks and the other for offences committed under the Arms Act 1959. Black bucks are the animals mentioned under the Protection of Wildlife Act 1972 and cannot be hunted. Anyone subjected to hunting can face imprisonment up to six years and a penalty as well. Here are the counter-arguments that Salman Khan has made. He is being maliciously targeted by forest officials. In his possession were air rifles which couldn't have been used to kill deer. The prosecution manipulated evidence, including the statements of the eyewitnesses, to frame him. Arms Act Case 1998 For the same black buck incident, Salman was charged for alleged offences carried out under the Arms Act 1952. The prosecution alleged that Salman Khan possessed two firearms during the shooting, the license for which had expired. On 18th Jan 2017, the Jodhpur Chief Justice Magistrate produced a mammoth 102-page judgment acquitting the actor. Chinkara Poaching Cases 1998 While the Black Buck case was under probe, Salman was accused of more violations. A driver from the Hamsat Sathya crew alleged that the actor had also hunted Chinkara deer near Bhavad village and Goda farm on 26th and 28th September. Just like the Black Buck case, Salman was slapped with cases for hunting a Chinkara deer, a violation of the Wildlife Act 1972 and for possessing expired firearms in the same incident. In 2006, Salman Khan was acquitted in the Arms Act case but was convicted for five years for poaching. On further appeal by the actor, the Rajasthan High Court acquitted Salman on the basis of underlying evidence. Salman Khan had claimed to the court that he was framed by the prosecution once again. With Sai Setu Entertainment Bureau, we on. Jantar Mantar in Delhi is synonymous with protest. Candlelight vigils, posters, sloganeering, dharnas, these are commonplace in thriving democracies. People protest, people demand accountability, people ask questions. But these things are a rarity in China. Dissent is crushed. Protests are muted, few and far between. We saw one today. The wife of a detained Chinese lawyer is trying to achieve the impossible, some would say. She wants to pressure the Xi Jinping dispensation, the Chinese government, to give her an explanation. An explanation on why her husband was arrested in August 2015 and where he has been since then. Li Wenzhou, the woman we are talking about, set off on a 100-kilometer march from Beijing to Tianjin City, where she believes her husband, lawyer Wang Quanzang, is being held by the authorities in China. It's been 1,000 days. That's a little less than three years since she last saw her husband. She's had no contact with him since August 2015 and has no way to find out if he is still alive. Lee began her 12-day march along with family members of other lawyers who've also been put behind bars in China. Lee believes 
that the authorities in China have kept her husband uh, and have kept the family under surveillance and therefore decided to keep her plan a secret. Ciao,去寻找我们中国的司法的这样一个答案。我我需要去寻找一个答案。中国不是一直宣称是依法治国吗？那为在王先生案件上，他们依法了没有？既然是依法了，依法治国，为什么不让律师会见？剥夺了我
they shout, they flood the well of the house and then they walk out. Why can the government and the opposition not behave like grown-ups for a change? This isn't supposed to be a rant. I'm afraid it's sound sounding like one. But what do you do in the face of such charades? The government, we can tell you, has found a new way to embarrass the opposition. Parliament members of the ruling party now say they will forego their salary of the 23 days the parliament did not function. They don't want that money. It's an awful attempt, we say, to claim the moral high ground. Unfortunately for them, one of their own refused to part with the salary on grounds that it was not their fault. Sure, it was ours. We voted for all of them. But I don't want to leave it there tonight. Let's show you some numbers that bring home the astounding inefficiency of India's parliamentarians. Look at these numbers. The total working days in the budget session, this session, 20. The total working hours, that has to be more than 20, of course. Uh, the total working hours uh, is 120. The total number of hours that these parliamentarians worked was 4 hours, 52 minutes, a little less than 5 hours. That's 1 24th of the time. And adjournments in 20 days, 44, more than twice a day. So what did they do in all these days? Did they pass any important laws? Did they discuss issues that have made headlines that affect the people of India directly? We made an interesting list for you of the time parliamentarians spent in discussing some of the burning issues of recent weeks. Bank fraud, how much time did they spend discussing it? Zero, none. Farmer suicides, no time spent discussing farmer suicides in this session. The high school exam paper leak, Zero. Facebook data breach, zero. The SCST Act, a royal one and a half minutes. That's the kind of work they've done. Let's jog your memory. Go over this list slowly with why each case is of relevance to you. We're starting with what is being called the biggest banking scandal in the history of India, the Punjab National Bank scam. A well-known diamond merchant, Nirav Modi, received loans to the tune of almost 1.8 billion US dollars. This loan was granted by offshore branches of various Indian banks on a guarantee from Punjab National Bank, meaning that the onus of repayment lies on the bank and not on Nirav Modi, which also means that a huge chunk of public money, money deposited by people like you and me in these branches is now gone with no way of getting it back, for now at least. And hours before a complaint was lodged in this case, Nirav Modi fled to the United Kingdom. But what did our parliamentarians do about it? They created a ruckus in the House. They raised slogans. The opposition stormed into the well of both the houses on a number of occasions. But there was no discussion on the matter. The difference between the haves and the have-nots has never been more stark. On one hand, a beleaguered businessman flees with almost 11,000 crore rupees. On the other, we have Indian farmers. They're struggling to make ends meet. They're committing suicide. The government informed members of parliament that there was a drop in the number of farmer suicides in the year 2016, a 10% dip, which is good. But the number of suicide cases will shock you. Despite a decent monsoon, more than 11,000, 11,000 farmers in this country committed suicide in the year 2016 alone. The agrarian distress in India shows no sign of abating. Reduced focus on the primary sector of the economy, benefits of central schemes not trickling down to the target population, a failing public distribution system have compounded the woes of the farmers. But do our MPs care? We guess not. Because there was no discussion on this issue either. Now to our children. April is supposed to be a light month for them, a month when their exams are over, they go for vacations, they prepare for the next class. But this month turned into a nightmare for a lot of high school kids in India. India's Central Education Board declared one exam each for class 10 and 12, null and void. The board claimed that the papers were leaked. The board ordered a re-examination. Thousands of students and parents took to the streets but the legislators paid no heed to the issue. It was not brought up in Parliament. Next is the massive data breach regarding Facebook. What started with an accusation of Facebook data being misused to influence American elections sent shockwaves across the world. How could India have been different? Democracies were at risk, but were the parliamentarians of the world's biggest democracy concerned? Apparently not. Barbs were traded between the opposition and the ruling party but the mudslinging happened outside Parliament. 
while nations across the world moved swiftly to safeguard the digital data of their citizens, Indian lawmakers were busy disrupting the proceedings of parliament. Even the caste protests, which brought cities across the country to a standstill with violent demonstrations across towns, predominantly in the states of Madhya Pradesh, Bihar and Uttar Pradesh, the government decided to steer clear of the controversy with just a six-minute statement by the Home Minister Rajnath Singh. This issue was taken up for discussion in Lok Sabha. It wrapped up in less than 90 seconds, one and a half minutes. That was the kind of discussion on issues that concern you. This is your parliament for you. 210 crore rupees wasted to conduct 20 days of proceedings that have had less than five hours of discussion. 44 adjournments, a wasted session later. It is you, the people of India, who have incurred the biggest loss. And the MPs of the ruling party say they do not want their salary.